Hey everyone, hope everyone is doing well. Happy Sabbath day, by the way. <clears throat> There's about uh, four or five more hours of that, so... Some good topics today. Um, my voice isn't the best right now. It's, it's kind of difficult to speak, but I have a bunch of things to, to cover and uh, and they're all interesting. I'm endorsing a channel. I don't usually, you know, I, I don't say that. I don't do those types of things. But um, I found a channel that I really respect. This guy's videos, and I'm and you know, and you never agree with someone with everything. It never, um, you know, it never really turns out that way. And that's the beauty of the body of Christ, right? Um, so it's truth unedited, and uh, I got a comment last video. I forget who who said it, but and I'm not trying to point you out. Um, he is worth watching because he's speaking the truth, and uh, he doesn't believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. I don't believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. It's not biblical, and I learned that lesson long ago. And what I believe, anyways, is that. Um, the true believers, the ones that God knows, keeps his commands. Um, God will help on these on these days that are coming. You know, like um, people hope that they're going to disappear, and that sounds nice, right? And be and be taken to heaven, but that's not going to happen. I want I want anyone who watches my video who believes in the pre-tribulation rapture to understand that God hasn't destined us to wrath, so he'll save us anyways. Um, so I have a bunch of um, points written down I want to talk about because they're very important. <clears throat> the first, okay, so I learned this off of Truth Unedited's last video. And don't you just love it, like, when you're on your journey with Yeshua, with Yahweh, that every once in a while, and it usually comes through listening through wholesome videos or by studying scripture. And I'm going to make it very clear to you. If you don't study scripture, you're not going to know God's character at all. That's exactly what I'm saying. If you don't study scripture, you're not going to figure out who God is. That's what I believe because you have to read to find out who God is. So in his last video, I got a revelation that just I was just blown away. And um, <clears throat> it was about the Reformation. I've, I've been, you know, on when the Sabbath comes, I, I a day before or that day, I try to decide what am I going to study this day. So that's what I do. Like I just, I'll, I'll study or I'll study scripture. And um, so I started to look at the Reformation after he said he was reading over it and he was explaining on a video. The concept of faith through grace alone is true, right? It, it's true. And um, I beg you to start reading what was the Reformation. Go look it up. Go look on uh, Wikipedia. I didn't read the whole thing yet because it's like it's like 50, 50 pages or something like that, and it and it's still not even in in depth. And um, the revelation I got was something that's happening right now something that's happening right now in front of our eyes there are so many you know you know the concept of free grace right like um god already paid the price you know you can go do whatever you want you can sin and he'll still forgive you you can't go and willingly sin that's not the way things work you can't willing you can't say you know god and go out there and purposely sin over and over and over just to be forgiven but if you do those things in in um what's the word 
you know, you're oblivious and you didn't do them purposely, then God will forgive you. But I want you to understand where this concept has come from. Faith through, faith through grace alone is, is true, right? We're only saved through our faith. That's it. Alone. What is it, was it called? Sola, not sola scriptura, but sola feed, fida? I forget. Um, I just read it yesterday, so. So, when the Church of Rome met with Martin Luther, he said, faith through faith it's through faith through grace alone not through works and stuff like that and it was at that point so we're talking about what 15 17 15 between 15 let's just say 15 17 and 1520 that concept took hold right but after that people started to use it and miss misuse it so when people think that we can do whatever we want and not keep God's commandments. You have to understand where faith through grace comes from. And it came from there. Just like in the Bible where you have, I'm not the best at explaining this because I just learned this. You know like you read in the Bible and you have to look at the context? It's, it's no different with this. You have to look at the context of where this idea came from and it was only to the situation at that time. What I'm saying is this. People from that point of Martin Luther's contention with, um, I don't know if it was, uh, I forget who it was, came to Leipzig, was it? Anyways, um, he wouldn't he wouldn't agree to go to 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 Rome because that happened to another person and Rome killed a person so someone in Germany sent a letter who was very influential and said why don't we meet in Germany or or the worms I think it was and um, so they had this debate and that's where it came from that's where it came from and so it was surrounding that debate where all that came from and because because of that, um, it's through. I, I can't, so I don't know if I have dys. I have autism. And I, I don't know if it's dyslexia. Sometimes I get things backwards. I always say things backwards. Um, faith through grace alone, right? And then not of works. So people from that point started to think, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to keep God's commandments, and that's where it got lost. That's the point of where it got lost. And that's I had the revelation yesterday. I hope you're following me. Because that's a very important revelation. Watch Truth Unedited's very last video. I'm going to link it in the description box. I love nothing more than pure people who have good intentions to teach you good things. It was in 1517 to 1520 where faith through grace alone took hold. And then all these denominations eventually started to form because people thought they could contend with the Catholic Church. So what happened there was good, but it was also bad because all these different denominations started springing up and disagreeing with each other. What my, my main point here and what I'm trying to get to is if you think we don't have to keep God's commandments, you're not going to make it. You may break some of them. You may murder a couple people. No, I'm just kidding. You know, you may break it, right? We all, we certainly break the commandments, as Jesus said, in our minds and lusts and stuff. And those things happen, right? Pardon me. But n know now, that's where it came through. These free gracers, you have to keep God's commandments. And you're going to say, that's works. Those things never went away. Just like the Sabbath never went away. It was the church who took that away. They changed times and laws all at once. From the book of Daniel, they will think to change times and laws. Do you not think, you know, people say, well, we don't have to keep the Sabbath. 
There's no place in the Bible that says we don't have to keep the Sabbath. Jesus was the sacrifice, and he took away, the, as it says in Daniel 9.27, the sacrifices are no more. We don't have to do all those things anymore. But we still have to keep God's commandments, and I choose to observe the Sabbath day. If you don't want to, that's up to you. But, um, yeah, so, so that's that. That's where this free grace thing came from. That we just have to believe, and that's it. Now, you know, there, you, you have your definition of what is believing and how far do I have to believe. I can't, I, I'm not going to get more into that. Only God knows who are His. Only God knows whose hearts are truly towards Him. So I'll move on to the next topic. Please watch that video because that revelation just came and smacked me right in the face. I always have quite a few topics to discuss. And um, and I can never fit all the things I want to talk about. And I'm not going to make them into separate videos. <clears throat> I just don't have that time. But how about that earthquake yesterday in New York City? Is it prophetic? Of all places to get, let's just call it a 5.0, right? Um you know, some people are saying it's because of Donald Trump. Um, if it if it is prophetic at all, if it is some type of warning sign, I wouldn't think it had to do with Donald Trump. I think it would rather have to do with the evil that's taking place there. Wasn't there a UN meeting occurring at that time? There was, I believe, because I saw the video of that what they were talking about like you could see the meeting happening and what they were they were doing but <clears throat> I would say it's I, I would say you know it's quite odd to have an earthquake in those areas and it even touched clo well it touched my province I saw all the little dots where people felt it and uh, usually an earthquake like that doesn't go that widespread but it did so I don't know actually. I'd like to hear and write things in the comments section. Anything you think. So my next thing I want to get to is oh, what is that? Matthew twenty four. Let's review that. Obviously, you know, uh, like myself and you. I've read over Matthew 24, Luke 21, Mark 13, probably many times, right? And the question is, when, what in it pertains to, to, to now and, you know, double fulfillment type stuff? So I'm going to read it over with you and just go over. I read over it and I don't see it the way I did yesterday. You know how you like forget things? Because when, when I'm trying to learn from other people, I remember it and I just... I'll read this. Um, let's go over it together. I'm not going to go over Luke as well, too. Let's just go through Matthew 24. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to him to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. So, um, did that happen? So there's a check mark, right? It happened, um, you know, 40 years after his death. The signs of the times and the end of the age. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when will these things be? Okay, so that's important. And what will be the sign of your coming? at the end of the age. There's two questions in that. I'm guilty for looking over things quickly and wanting to fit it the way I want. <clears throat> so 
They came up to him in private, tell us these things, when will these things be? What will be the sign of your coming? And, okay, number one, what will be the sign of your coming is one thing. And also the, the end of the age. Those are two separate things they're talking about. The end of the age is the end of their age. You know, there's always like an age, like, you know, maybe a war happens and it's and a, and a new age begins type thing, you know, like, you know, you know like the Greeks, the, per, the from the Persians to the Greeks type thing. Jesus answered and said, take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. So was that happening right after? I believe it probably was, right? Right after Jesus died. So wouldn't it be? It, it was, right? But that's also happening now you'll hear wars and rumors of wars were they hearing of wars and rumors of wars i don't think it was like now um so it's very troublesome to think of what see that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet that could be for either one but when it comes to this it says for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom that's certainly the end and us and there'll be famines pestilence earthquakes in various places the pestilence and earthquakes um are quite obvious when you see like covid you see so pestilences are also all the diseases okay look at us we have um how many autoimmune do i have um myself um well that would make one two I have two think two problems of autoimmunity, and there are like hundreds out there, if not if not thousands, right? So that has to speak to today. There are earthquakes all over the place, and it seems to be like he said in diverse places. Like they don't seem to be in places like Europe and the States. You know there is, but the, the bigger ones seem to be in like all these islands all across the world. That's what I see, anyways. And these are the beginning of sorrows. They will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you'll be hated by all nations by for my name's sake. That could be both that and now, and then many will be offended and betray one another. That could be now, and will hate one another. Many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And, okay, so there always was, but there's especially now. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. I think that's quite telling, that that sentence right there, verse 12. That's happening right now. This is what's happening in, in, in countries. Just look at the pro-Hamas rallies. Pardon me a second. I'm not for death and destruction. If you look clearly, they were attacked by Hamas, which was the plan. They killed 1,300 people in the worst, they, by fire alive, cutting them open, like women who were pregnant, cutting people's heads off. These things are true. The war was justified, I believe. I've seen quite a few videos of like, you know, what really is going on here? And like, I saw Chris Cuomo because he's part of Valuetainment now. I actually like him. Not the old Chris, the, the new Chris. He's actually quite likable, but he said, you know, like the reality here is they took their people, give them back. And you wonder how many reports are, are, are being believed that are just coming from Hamas. But listen. Those people, of course, I feel bad for. But, you know, people say the Palestinians are not... I'm not trying to be political. I read the stats. And you know the son of Hamas? The, the son of the Hamas leader who's now Christian and speaks out against, like, his father and all Hamas? He said, in fact, it's like 80%. 
It's it's like the 65 to 80 percent support Hamas. So they so they brought this on themselves. They were a place of hate. I don't know what will happen. I just want that war to end. I'm just giving you the facts of this. Sorry, I know I go off here, but. There's a lot of lawlessness in the U.S. and the love is growing cold. That's why it's important to discuss these things. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. So we have to endure to the end. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come. So obviously that hasn't happened because the end hasn't come. So there's still more to this. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. So I believe, my personal belief is that did happen. Antiochus and um, maybe with the Romans too. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. So the Christians did flee to the mountains and they were saved. But a million Jews died. Let him who's on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his home. And uh, let him who's in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. For there will be great tribulation, such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time. Okay, so that almost looks like it, that looks like it would be the end, right? But what I said was still true. No, nor ever shall be. You read the the excerpts of what Antiochus Epiphanes did was horrific in the temple, what he was sacrificing. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. So it's talking about now. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. And if anyone says to you, look, here's to Christ. Or there, don't believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I've told you beforehand. Um, therefore, if they say to you, look, he's in the desert, don't don't go out to look. Uh, he's in the inner room. There are so many false Christs out there, by the way, people pretending to be Jesus. They're with millions of followers. Don't believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Forever the carcasses, okay, uh, there the eagles will be gathered. What does that mean? So so how do we know for sure it's going to be Jesus versus anyone else? Because everyone's going to see it from east to west. Everyone will see it. What does that mean? Um, forever the carcasses, the eagles will be gathered. I just studied this the other day. It means that Jesus is that carcass. He gave. He died for us, and we are the eagles. We'll be. We'll be surrounded by. We will be with Jesus. I don't know how to explain that properly, but that is the definition. Sounds strange, but it is. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. People are looking to what's coming on Monday. For that, I don't think that's going to be. By the way. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven will be shaken. Then the sign of the, there's a lot of signs in this in the in the sky for sure though. And the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. All the tribes of the earth will mourn. That's like they will see those who pierced him in Zechariah. But they one third of Israel will be saved. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He will send his angels of the great sound of a trumpet. That would be the last trumpet, right? And they will gather together as elect from the four winds, from one end of the heaven to the other. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to stop there because that's all I needed to explain for that. Keep watch. Okay, what did I want to talk about next here?
very important to know is that, you know, it was upsetting for me when I realized that the pre-tribulation rapture was from John Nelson Darby, just, you know, like 300 years ago. And, you know, people might say, well, we only recognized it now. No, I don't, I don't believe so. It wasn't like that. It was never taught that way. And um, so, yeah, I just... It, we will be raptured, but it'll be we're raptured when Christ comes. It's not any time before then. And the point of that is, you know, I felt upset and I thought I'm gonna have to go through hell. Uh, I'd like, like, what am I supposed to do with someone who needs painkillers, like quite a, you know enough of them just to stay alive? What am I going to do? Keep your faith in God. That's what it came to. I had no other choice. Keep your faith in God because the reality is he will have our backs. It's that faith. It's faith. Guys, I was at a point where I didn't want to live. Not suicidal. like um, Not in the way you think. In the way of uh, like my pain can get that bad. Um, just completely envelop me. God likes people who have faith, and I know that. And if you tr if you keep that faith, God God will have a favor with you. I believe. I believe He will. Even you know we're still go through tribulations and stuff like that. But uh, what else did I want to talk about? He has our back. So the eclipse. What I think about the eclipse, I don't think anything will happen and. You know, they're going to cancel schools and state of emergency, all this kind of stuff. Um, I think that considering that, by the way, it only passes over two, two Ninevehs, the total eclipse. The other ones are outside of the zone, eh? But those other five may still be in the eclipse, not total, though. This is true. You have to look deep into these things. You have to look yourself, not just to believe them, right? Um, so I saw that on Sling and Stone. He showed the path uh, of that it takes. I don't know. They could be under like 50% or something like that. Where I live here, um, it's going to be so two hours away from me, where my brother lives, um, is totality where I live here it's probably going to be 90 percent something like that so it's pretty close to totality um, yeah just a couple other things I don't know if you've ever um, I never wanted to really open up the apocrypha you know and um, it was through truth unedited I had read about half of Jasher the book of Jasher so I'm going to talk about and he's saying, listen, guys, it's a Church of England who's telling us not to, to, and he gave his reasons why. So I decided to open it up. And I read in Joshua that it says, is it not written in the book of Jasher? And it's somewhere else, too. I forget where it is that says the book of Jasher. But the question is, was the book of Jasher molested in any way, right? Was it tampered with? When you read it, to me, it fills in a lot of blanks, and it doesn't really... It doesn't twist things in a way that you would think that, oh, you know, someone messed with that just to do this or that. It seems to fill in a lot of stuff. I don't know. I can't, I can't give you, I think there are truths in there for sure. But was this passed down by the Jews properly is the question, is the question, and, and whoever else had it. Um, I'm actually having a good time reading it. I'm on chapter like 46 right now. It's a long book. Um, it would probably make it the longest book in, in the Bible if it were placed in there. It would. There are 91 chapters, and like almost every page is like 70 verses. Long verses, too. But, you know, sometimes you're like, I, I don't know if I can believe this or not. Like the sons of Jacob when uh, their sister uh, Dina or Dinah 
was raped by what, who was it? Um, Hamar. That all the sons, you know, the patriarchs, they went and they fought and they beat all these kings, all these people, and it just went on and on and on and on. They beat like all the people in Canaan. And I'm like, okay, this is where I kind of, you know, have trouble believing. But then it struck me in my mind and I thought, well, didn't, when Lot was taken, right? When Lot was taken, Abraham took 318 men, right? His servants and, and stuff like that. And defeated the four kings of the lamb. Those are the ones who beat Nimrod, right? So... Who knows? Maybe it's true. You know, if, if Abraham did that, then why couldn't the, Jacob and his sons do that? So anyways, it's just like, uh, who knows? It's up to you if you want to read that or not. And the reason I started reading it um, was because I was curious, but because the guy on Truth Unedited, I don't even know his name. I don't think he just says his name, but he said, you know, don't be ignorant. Don't be ignorant to the things that maybe you should learn anyways. And uh, that's, a, that's good to go by. You have to be very careful with your doctrine, though. Just, two, uh, just one more thing I want to talk about, but I'm going to take a break. Uh, just give me a break of my voice here. And it's about uh, X. It's about X. Actually, you know what? I want to say this before I talk about the letter X. <clears throat> the sign X. I don't understand why people... Um, and there goes my voice. Why people have trouble with the Sabbath day. Because it's like the longest commandment of all. And it's number four, which is very important. God hallowed it and blessed it. Now, people think because, um, sorry, people think that because Jesus Christ died, and this, like I like I mentioned at the beginning, faith through grace alone, that these things have been eliminated. In the book of Daniel, it says that they will think to change times and laws. So I ask you this question, and it's like, you know, the holy day is Saturday, not Sunday, okay, number one. It was Constantine who changed this and changed. So the book of Daniel said they will think to change times and laws. How's that taken place is the question. Did they change the time, number one? They moved it from a Saturday to a Sunday. That's time. Did they change the law? They did, right? All of a sudden, you don't have to celebrate the Sabbath. And you say, well, those things were done away with. No, they weren't. They never were. They never were. Do you think God just decided to remove one of his commandments? That just sounds that just sounds irregular. That sounds strange that God would do that. God didn't make void any of the commandments. I feel convicted to at least study, do a video, celebrate it in some type of way, light a candle, whatever. Because I understand that he never took it away. And you might argue with me, and I, I say I make a comparison this way then. So considering they will think to change times and laws, keep that in your mind. What if God had taken away um, thou shall not murder? Would that get your attention? People just outwardly murdering people? 
And you say, well, that's different. It isn't different. How is that different? They're both part of the Ten Commandments. And then you're going to revert back and say, well, because of faith or grace alone, then I can't get through to you. God didn't make void anything. And in the Bible, after Jesus died, so Jesus was gone, right? He went up to, to heaven on the right hand of God, of his Father. That it says in the Bible, Paul debated with them on several Sabbath days. So he came back to those places to debate, debate with them on the Sabbath because they were still celebrating the Sabbath. Sabbath wasn't taken away. Okay, just wanted to get that out. I know for some people like myself, I cannot fully keep the Sabbath because I live alone. Um, so with my, disabil with my disabilities, there are some things that I can't avoid, like you know, if things are going to run out in my fridge, right? Um, and I only have opportune times to do certain things like that. I think God knows. I'm not telling you to, to break anything. I'm just saying God, God will understand. X. I don't go on these things. You know, like, if something leads me, you know, by, if I'm, like, reading something on, on Google and it leads me and it says it's going to go to to X, Twitter, whatever, like that, um, I may click on it, but it asks me to sign up and I, and I won't. I won't go on that type of thing. But it's funny how we changed uh, Twitter to X. And then all of a sudden I, I see all these um, rock stars, all these even like people like Joel Osteen, Joyce Meyer, people in Hollywood, all of them doing this, right? They're doing this. Why would Joyce Meyer and, and um, um, what's his name, uh, the Joel Osteen and all those guys, why would they do that? Why would Joel Osteen and several pictures be doing this sign? I didn't realize what that sign is. And... Um, these people are all worshiping the pharaohs. That's what the pharaoh did. And you look at the, um, all these X's all over the place. Look at like Elon Musk. So I'm not I'm not trying to get um, into these types of things, but I'm warning you. The X. He did he didn't he call his son X? Everything he does, he starts calling X. All these people are worshiping the devil. Those rockets that are going up and uh, are from NASA are named after an Egyptian god, a snake god or something like that. But I just like when you look around, you see these things everywhere. All these people are indoctrinated into these things that are going to take their lives these people at the end of when when Christ comes and all these things come, they're going to be shrieking. They're going to be wailing. I don't know if you've ever um, heard people wail before. You know when it says like that, people they wail, they gnash their teeth and all that. Well, when I when I was um, self-studying war. And you can see in the movies too, but I don't think they show it uh, the proper way <clears throat> as it really was. Like in like uh, the Polish ghettos where they put all the people and crammed them in there. People were dying all over the place. They were starving them. And people were wailing, you know, like their family dying, their friends dying. And it was incredibly loud, incredibly hard to take. And um, that's where that thing came where they say the Christians didn't do anything in Germany. They knew that the ashes were going up. They knew everything. And they heard their cries. I don't know if that was Austria. Or I forget exactly where it was. But what they did is they started turning up their music because they couldn't stand it. And um, at the end, when people realize that they went the wrong way, that's what's going to happen. Um, 
faith is the answer here. Anyways, guys, happy uh, rest of your, your Sabbath day. God bless. I'll pray for everyone who, who watches this video.